men and women as well. Um, you know, Lee, I'm going to pick up with you on this because this talk about chemical weapons, I mentioned earlier, uh, the head, the Britain's uh, Armed Forces Minister said, and I'm reading this as a direct quote, that all options are on the table if this is found to be true, the use of chemical weapons. Uh, Liz Truss has said that this would be a callous escalation. I have to say this um, suggestion uh, comes from the Azov Battalion, who are not the, the nicest of people. I'm trying to pick my words carefully. Neo-Nazis. Your thoughts? <laughs> Neo-Nazis, there you go. There you go. That'll do. What's your thoughts on all of this? I think it's a potentially really incendiary and inflammatory claim because what we've seen in recent weeks is Western capital sort of laying the ground for a potential intervention if Russia were to use chemical weapons. So there have been warnings since around the 10th of March that Russia is going to use chemical weapons. Um, and in fact, intelligence officers admitted to NBC, the American um, news channel, that they released this intelligence into the public, even though there was no evidence of any chemical weapons uh, being deployed anywhere near Ukraine. And then on the 25th of March, um, President Biden spoke at the NATO summit and threatened to respond in kind. I don't think he quite meant that, but to respond in kind if chemical weapons were used. So what we've seen is the West drawing a red line to say if chemical weapons are used, you know, all, all options are on the table, as the armed forces minister is now saying, which could, um, it could mean greater NATO intervention in the conflict and therefore an escalation of the conflict, maybe direct conflict with Russia. So they've drawn that red line. And then, as you say, the Azov Regiment is the one that has said chemical weapons have been used against us. And they are the ones that want to draw NATO into this war directly to try to tilt the balance against the Russians. So this is, I think, an extraordinarily dangerous moment in what is an extremely dangerous conflict. James? Well, I agree with that. Uh, I think the other side of it is, um, which I'm sure L Lee and Scarlett would concur with, is that there does appear to be little that can stop uh, Putin, at least in, at the level of, or the Kremlin, at least at the level of intentions. You know, they, they are not just aggressive in tone, they are aggressive in action, and where it will end, it's difficult to say. As it happens, Michelle, Russia said that it had uh, destroyed all its chemical weapons um, under the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons regime in 2017. Its record in Syria, while controversial, does not exactly inspire confidence, uh, or at least uh, um, the Syrian regime's record conniving with the Russians on chemical weapons doesn't inspire confidence. We have to look at it in the round. The U.S. has continually, continuously postponed the deadline when it will destroy all its chem chemical weapons. The Russians used to have 40,000 tons of them, horrible stuff. The Americans still have 715 tons. I'm not saying that's equivalent to what's going on. It's completely separate. But when we think of napalm in the Vietnam War, mm. uh, you know, there's a case to answer uh, on the West side, not just uh, on the Russian side. Right now, Russia is the main problem, and there's no doubt of that. At the same time, the West isn't helping any. When they say, you know... Uh, uh, all options are open, you know, Putin might call their bluff. It's deliberately vague. They've been vague from the start. And, you know, unless they show a bit more steel, um, you know, Putin will run rings around them because they don't have the determination yeah. that they need. And, I mean, you mentioned uh, Vietnam and Nepal, and I've been to Vietnam, I've been to the war museum that's there, and anyone that's been will find this is like an area, like a room, and it's the most bizarre thing because it's all about how the prisoners of war um, were treated, which most people would say would, was probably pretty appalling. But yet when you're in this museum, there's pictures of them playing football, having a Christmas dinner and all this kind of stuff. So actually, when it comes to propaganda, uh, Scarlett, and messages being um, given to us and presented to us in a certain way, we have got to be so careful here because the ramifications of what could potentially happen next are immense. We have to make sure that we are absolutely crystal clear on what is going on. Oh, yeah, no, no. It's absolutely terrible. And, and, and like Lee, I was appalled when the Americans admitted that they didn't check everything before saying it, but would put out things Pentagon. as propaganda 
um, if, for instance, that, that, that the Chinese might be selling weapons to mm. Russia actually as a shot across the bows when they had no idea that it was true. And what what has always been really dangerous is that Ukraine becomes becomes a, 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 the middle the, the, the pawn in the middle of Russia versus NATO. And, and actually, like you, having been to the War Museum in Vietnam and, and having travelled through Vietnam, there is no excuse for us ever using chemical weapons. I don't care what the Russians have done, and I think they have behaved appallingly, and they are certainly the aggressors. I don't think there is any excuse for the Americans using chemical weapons against them. And I think, like James, I think the Americans should have destroyed their chemical weapons. I think we should have no chemical weapons. I think it's absolutely dreadful. And of course, I mean, you know, this is what happened in Kosovo with the uh, Kosovo Liberation Army, is of course the Ukrainians want to bring NATO into it. That's, that is the only way that they're going to win. Mm. Um, but, but actually, NATO has to work out what they are really going to do. But I feel um, we have this conversation frequently, and sometimes I feel like a stuck record, particularly on this topic, because I'm frequently saying, um, Lee, that I get concerned because this is such, um, it's an awful, barbaric situation that we're seeing in Ukraine. We see all this imagery. You know, we're hearing stories now about how many women, you know, how women have been treated. It's so emotional. And any right-thinking person, when you're seeing these images, you know, they hurt you, they galvanise you to want to do something because you want to help. Mm. But then it's uh, the flip side of this is, you know, Putin is, you know, well, what is Putin? Putin is somebody who wants what he wants and seems very content and clear on taking action. And it just worries me, the emotional response that a lot of people seem to be exhibiting when it comes to how deeply the Britain, the UK, should get involved. What's your thoughts? I mean, I've never seen anything quite like it when it comes to a conflict. If you think back to the Iraq war, for example, it was hugely controversial. This country was split down the middle. And there were lots of people that were openly questioning the US and, and UK claims about weapons of mass destruction, quite rightly, as it turned out, that this was absolute false. Um, the, the, the intelligence had been fixed around the decision to go to war. And many people realised then that the government would, in fact, lie to them over questions of foreign relations. And some people, you know, when I was on that march as a young student, um, I met people that had never gone on a march before in their life. And they realised for the first time in their lives that their government might lie to them. And you might think, well, that's incredibly naive. But it did change the way that people thought about foreign policy in this country. And I think for the better, in the sense that it, it, we shouldn't, simply just accept in a trusting way absolutely everything authorities wish to say. Because in the context of war, there's always an information war that goes alongside the military right. campaign, which is designed to create a consensus and create public support for a particular uh, course of action. And with Ukraine, what we've seen is the total success of that operation. And obviously, what the Russians are doing is brutal and barbaric, and they give the West plenty of information and material to use. But we've also got to be incredibly careful because, as we say, with this particular example, it clarifies the issue that we should be thinking about. Who is making these reports? Can we trust what they're saying? What is their interest in, in making these kinds of well, claims? So we need bizarre. to very carefully judge these claims. But the, these, you know, let's just call it what it is. We'd mention this anyway. A, a collection of neo-Nazis that are quite outwardly what they are, they're seemingly quite proud of it. Zelensky himself described them as, well, basically, they just are what they are, words to that effect. And I find it so peculiar that they're just kind of allowed to operate and be there, and, and in this instance, their claims would be reported before they've even been verified, because to me, I would take this bunch of people and absolutely want to verify anything that came out of their mouths before I even thought about publishing it. James? Well, I think that's, uh, that's right. And Lee is entirely right. I, I think you could sum up the media information war as two, two things. Terrible pictures of people going through hell and utterly the emotional register, plus 
a glib demonization of Putin. I mean glib not because he is a, a good guy, but because we need analytical tools to rise above the individual incident, to rise above the Biden fudge and that, you know, all, all options are on the table. We really need to get underneath this dispute. And people like Fergal Keane uh, and Olga Guerin on the, uh, on the BBC and elsewhere insist on just trying to confront us with the need to cry or explode or stuff like that, and then some demonology. It won't do. The stakes are too high for that. People are dying, and we need serious, sober, and cool debate on it.